Welcome back to part three of the introductory video for Introduction to Proofs. We're going through a list of seven pieces of advice for succeeding in an Introduction to Proofs course. The third piece of advice is to ask lots of questions. So at every stage uh, of this course, you should ask as many questions as you have. Um, and sometimes they'll be just for yourself. You'll be reading through the textbook and you'll circle something and say, I don't understand what this means or how did they come up with this? It could also be in this video. You're watching, I, I, you're watching and I say something and you, and you think, oh, well, well, what does he mean there? It could also be um, in tutorial or in class um, or on an assignment. Ask tons of questions. Um, you can ask instructors, you can ask TAs, you can ask uh, fellow students, you can ask the internet, whatever you want. Um, write down all of the questions you have and see how many of them you can find answers to. It's okay to ask questions. Um, and it's better that you're honest with yourself uh, about how much you know versus how much you don't know. Don't try to trick yourself into thinking you know more than you do. So if you're stuck at a place um, and you don't know how to proceed, say, I don't know how to proceed here. And you can try some things, but then see if you can uh, like understand a little bit better how to do it. L let's give you an example about cooking. So if you're reading a recipe and the recipe says to uh, blanch the broccoli, don't just guess what blanching means. Look it up. Um, it's better that you say, I don't understand what blanching means, and look it up, than say, oh, blanching, I think I know what that means, and then just try some random thing. It's much better that you're honest with yourself, ask questions, and look up answers. Fourth piece of advice is to learn the definitions in this course, but don't memorize anything else. One thing that you might think of for a math course is that you should be memorizing as much as possible and understanding as little as possible. Uh, I assure you that is not good for introduction to proofs. The thing that makes an introduction to proofs course so uh, fun and interesting is that we start with a bunch of mathematical definitions and these are the building blocks of the course. So we're going to start with the definition of primes, composite numbers, even function, even numbers, odd numbers, monotone functions, one-to-one, -one, things like this. And the, we'll, we'll write down the definitions. And the fun thing will be, how do those definitions interact? What are the sort of properties that those things have? And you're going to see a lot of consequences of these basic definitions, but they're usually not worth memorizing. The more interesting thing is, about how do the definitions play with each other. So when you're learning this course, uh, when you're proceeding through it, learn all of the basic definitions and start there. Don't just write down a list of all of the facts and memorize them. The fifth piece of advice is to play. Now this might seem like a strange bit of advice for a math course, and for some of you, this might make you a little bit uh, physically ill to think that you might play in a math course. This is an important step in an introduction to proofs course. Like I said in the previous bit of advice, we're gonna see a lot of different definitions, a lot of different um, properties that mathematical objects can have. And when we're coming up with statements and trying to understand what is true, well, you have to have experience with the objects, and the most common way to get experience is to play around with them. Just take out a piece of paper, write down some things, look at some examples, write down as many examples as you know, see if any of them have any special properties, and don't get worried so much about, like, whether, um, like, whether this is too hard or too easy of a problem. Um, start off, whenever you get a new definition, play around with it. See what sort of things happen with it. 
And this leads us to the next bit of advice. Make lots of conjectures. We're going to see this a little bit later in the course, but a conjecture is something that you think might be true. So if you've gathered a lot of data, you might say, oh, I think that prime numbers and odd numbers are related in some way. And make a conjecture. Say that I think that all prime numbers are odd or something like that. And once you have that conjecture, you can then try to prove that it's true or see that it's false uh, or things like this. But after you've done all, once you've done some playing, then you can come back and make a conjecture about what you think is true. And this part is quite fun. This is the part where you're going to be creating new mathematics. And yeah, maybe when it comes to simple objects, people, have, some people have already thought about this, but who cares about them? We're talking about you in this course right now, and you're making observations that you've never made before. So it's brand new to you. Last bit of advice for this course is to prove everything you can. The thing that's so fun about uh, Math 102 and, in, and an introduction to proofs course from the perspective of uh, truth is that you are going to be the person who can decide whether something is true or false, and you get to decide whether uh, a proof is valid or not. And at first, this seems a little bit scary. It seems like the way that you check that a proof works is by giving it to a mathematician or giving it to a professor or a TA and saying, does this work? But that's not how it will be throughout this course. Throughout this course, you are going to be the one who decides whether an argument is good or not. And with that in mind, you should prove absolutely everything you can. So if you find that you're leaving gaps in your arguments, you should try to fill them. Um, this is less relevant at the beginning of the course, but as the course progresses, there's always a point where someone says, do I have to prove this thing? And in this course, the answer is yes. Yes, you do. You always have to prove it. Um, even if it's a basic fact, you should always prove it. Um, this is a little bit of a lie. Near the end of the course, we will be getting into some fairly serious material, and we don't want to get bogged down in the details too much. But that's the basic idea, is to prove absolutely everything. In summary, here are the seven pieces of advice for succeeding in this course. Work on problems, get stuck and get unstuck, ask lots of questions, learn the definitions but don't memorize anything else, play, make lots of conjectures, and prove everything you can. Before we finish, I want to take some time to reflect. What are the two key learning objectives in this course? We mentioned them in the first video. Take a moment now to remind yourself what are the two key learning objectives. What is a piece of advice for succeeding in this course that you like, and what's a piece of advice that you dislike? Finally, for the ones that you like and dislike, how will you put it into action? How will you follow it? Write down a plan for how you will achieve that, um, or how you will follow that piece of advice. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.